a voice for many people who are going through a lot of mental health issues. So I, I was basically born in Eldoret and <laughs> raised in Eldoret. I went to primary school in Eldoret and growing up, I'd say life, life was good mm -hmm. growing up as mm -hmm. a child. I was, I was a very happy child. Mm -hmm. In fact, I remember I was, I was a very playful child and my dad actually nicknamed me the captain of games. Mm -hmm. So I was a happy child. I was very active at home until class six when I was 12 years old, when my parents decided they wanted to take me to a new school. So my previous school was okay. I had amazing friends. I, I used to perform so well in athletics, everything. Mm -hmm. So when I went to this new school, ah, things were different. I remember the first day at school, I never even made any, fr sorry, I never, I never made any friends the first day at school and that was quite awkward. Mm -hmm. So I, the first day at school, I, I was ridiculed for my school uniform. It was different. My dress was baggy. Mm -hmm. I was the tallest girl in class, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Being in class six, I was very tall. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the first day, I remember I went back home and I told my mom, ah, oh, the first day at school was okay, but I didn't make any friends. Mm -hmm. And my mom was like, ah, it's cool. If you didn't make any friends, mm -hmm. just stay there for a while. I'm sure things will change after a while. Mm -hmm. But time went on and on in the same school. Mm -hmm. So we had um, swimming lessons. Mm -hmm. In my previous school, we didn't have swimming classes. So mm -hmm. this was something new to me. Mm -hmm. It was kind of exciting because mm -hmm. I knew this would be a good experience. I know. But... <laughs> It was nothing I expected. Mm -hmm. I remember the first time we went to swimming when I when I changed now in the in the you know in the washrooms when you're changing to your yeah. swimming costume. Mm -hmm. So when I was changing into mine, th there was some group of girls who was, who were looking at me when I was changing. Mm -hmm. So there's a bathmark I have um, somewhere here mm -hmm. around my waist. Mm -hmm. So it's a layer of skin. I was actually born with it. Mm -hmm. So I think when these girls saw it, they were so creeped up. Mm -hmm. And they thought maybe I have a skin disease or something. So they started uh, spreading word that, that this girl has come with skin disease. She's going to get in the swimming costume, swimming, sorry, in the swimming pool and infect us. So I was getting out of the changing room and everyone is staring at me. And I'm like, why, why, why is everyone just looking at me with weird eyes? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, so maybe, maybe it's because I'm a new student. Mm -hmm. So that day after swimming, people made fun of my body, of how skinny I was. That was the first time ever I was body shamed. Mm -hmm. My collarbones, my bones are like sticking out mm -hmm. and people made fun of that. You know, I was even being asked if I have like diseases yeah. that are making me look so skinny so, and mm -hmm. all that. Yeah. So that started affecting me. I was... I started getting depressed because it went on and on. It's something that went on and so, on and so, on. So you faced all these at the age, uh, at class six? At, at class six, 12 years old, I started experiencing body shaming mm -hmm. and social and verbal bullying mm -hmm. when I was in class six. Mm -hmm. So you know when people are making fun of you, no one wants to be your friend because mm -hmm. you're like the loser in the school. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I didn't really, I can't say I had genuine friends. Because most of the time I would isolate myself mm -hmm. in primary. I would, I would spend most time alone. Because again, people don't want to work with you because they feel like you'll embarrass them or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... And so did you, did you try to talk it to your parents? And maybe <laughs> think of getting yeah. a transfer from that school? So that, that, that's where the problem came in. Mm -hmm. You want to say it to your parents, but you don't know how mm -hmm. to say it. And when you're 12 years old, you don't really know that what you're going through is, is body bullying. shaming, yeah. is bullying, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. You just think that it's something normal, something that will go away. Mm -hmm. So I really didn't, I didn't want to tell my parents. I know my parents would have taken action, maybe try and get me a new school, mm -hmm. but I didn't want to because again, mm -hmm. my dad took me to this new school because he, it was actually a, a, a school that um, students performed really well mm -hmm. and the school was nice, the food, everything, the environment was okay. Mm -hmm. So my dad wanted the best for me and I didn't, I wasn't ready to disappoint him. So yeah, I just, I just persevered and said I'd, I'd, I'd just ignore all the bullying and all the body shaming, all the bad words. 
I just decided to go through them in silence because at that age I didn't know that this was actually depression or anything like that. Wow. Oh. So yeah. you grew that thick skin at <laughs> that young age? At 12 years of age. It was tough. Mm -hmm. It was tough because I remember when, now when I was in class, around class seven, mm -hmm. going to class eight, mm -hmm. ah, things had gotten so bad at school. Mm -hmm. I, I actually got, after some time I got to make like two friends, but then these two friends are on and off, you know. Um, like we would spend time together and then the next time they don't want to talk to me. So one time after break, I went to class and I found a letter in my desk. Mm -hmm. So opening the letter, it was written, we are so sorry, we don't want to work with you because you're embarrassing us. Mm. Oh yeah. my. And I was like, wow. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually this ugly. You start thinking to yourself, yeah. am I actually this bad looking? And also I didn't mention that I actually had acne. Mm -hmm. I really had big pimples on my face. Like mm -hmm. right now it has reduced, but mm -hmm. I had I had acne. So th I think that was also part of the reason why a lot of people didn't want to hang around you because mm -hmm. they feel like you're not pretty enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So And so how was your life back at home? It being that you're being harassed in school yeah. You're being ridiculed in mm. school, and then now you get home. Yeah. Did you like go into a room, hide, and cry yourself <laughs> out? No. So mm -hmm. actually, when I was in primary, I was in boarding, oh, so my okay. parents didn't get to see me a lot more often. Mm -hmm. But when we closed school, I mm -hmm. had amazing friends at home. Mm -hmm. My siblings were so good. So going back home, I wouldn't be lost in the moment. Mm -hmm. Like, I wouldn't be in that, that depressive thought, mm -hmm. like when I'm in school. Because at home I have people who make me happy, my siblings, ah, my siblings are always there for me. Mm -hmm. I had good friends, so yeah, no one would ever tell that I was depressed or I was going through did, did that you, type of bullying. Okay, yeah. did you ever become suicidal in a way? Yeah, when actually the first time mm -hmm. I started contemplating suicide when I was when I was in class eight. That was when I was fifteen. There, yeah, no, no, yeah, fifteen, around mm -hmm. fifteen years of age. Mm -hmm. So, of course, uh, people were avoiding me in school. I was isolating myself. I started feeling ugly. Mm -hmm. I would look at myself in the mirror, see all these pimples. Mm -hmm look at my height, how tall I am, mm -hmm. my body, the way I'm skinny, and I would just feel so unworthy of love, I'd feel so horrible. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I just used to ask myself, like, who am I even alive? Like, if no one wants to hang around me, no mm -hmm. one wants to be my friend, people are just making fun of me, what's the point? So yeah, the first time I contemplated suicide was when I was in class eight, but... How I, did you <laughs> deal with it? I didn't... Um, so I remember mm -hmm. um, I went to tell my class teacher mm -hmm. that I was being, um, I was going through a lot because mm -hmm. I was being made fun of and everything. So when I went to this teacher, mm -hmm. funny enough, mm -hmm. I went and told her, okay, so some students have been making fun of my appearance, my, my acne, my height, mm -hmm. and it's making me uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So this teacher tells me, Mm -hmm. And in my head, I'm like, what has my height got to do with someone bullying me? Mm -hmm. So I didn't even get any help. Mm -hmm. That teacher was like, you need to learn to stand up for yourself. Yes, because you are a big girl. Because I'm a big girl, because I'm tall. I mean, why, <laughs> why would a tall girl like you be bullied? If, ne if anything, mm -hmm. you are the one who looks like the bully. Yeah. Yeah, so I didn't even get any help. Mm -hmm. from this person I thought would mm -hmm. be a safe space to report to. So uh, that night I was I was frustrated. I remember I went to the matron. Mm -hmm. I told her I was sick. I mm -hmm. took pills. So for like for, for like a week, I used to go to the mat matron to take medicine. So I used to store the medicine. Mm -hmm. So that was actually what I had in mind, that I would use this medicine. After I've stuck up enough pills, I would just swallow them at once, and mm -hmm. maybe that would be the end of me. But yeah, I tried that, mm -hmm. I did, and fortunately or unfortunately, well, let's say fortunately, nothing happened. Mm -hmm. I just got sick, just mm -hmm. a normal headache, okay. stomachache, yeah, but nothing happened. So yeah, that was the first time I actually contemplated suicide when I was 15. Okay, yeah. so 
not so many young girls mm. can fight through depression yeah. like you and then come through it mm. because the the generation we have right now mm -hmm. you find that they are not so much so close to their parents they can't go tell the, their parents this is what i'm going through yeah. and if they can go and tell their parents that this is what i'm going through let's say this young girl comes from a very poor family yeah. and then she goes to the parent tells the mother that she's depressed mm -hmm. this young this woman in the village does not understand what comes with depression. Yes. So what are some of these signs mm -hmm. that someone should look yes. to? Yeah. So when you're depressed, <laughs> well, I think the symptoms are different for everyone. I'd say what I experienced, mm -hmm. you, the moments when you wake up and you're just angry, you don't know why you're angry, it's hard to get out of bed, mm -hmm. you feel exhausted, you feel fatigued, you're not motivated to do anything, mm -hmm. you're triggered by the, by the smallest things, like anything would make you angry. Mm -hmm. And you feel like no one can understand you, you mm -hmm. feel like no one can know what you're going through. Mm -hmm. So you isolate yourself mm -hmm. from, so there are different types of um, of trauma responses. Mm -hmm. There's the flight response, there's phone, yeah, so when you're, let's say, in the flight response, mm -hmm. you tend to isolate yourself from others. You tend to not talk. You're mm -hmm. always, you're just in your own space. You, it affects your health. Mm -hmm. It affects your health. You get crazy migraines, mm -hmm. just stressed about a lot of things. So I'd say if you notice, if, for example, you're a parent, and you notice that your, ch your child is starting to have changes of behavior. For example, your child was a very happy child like me. I was so happy mm -hmm. until I started experiencing these things. And now I was I, at home now after some time mm -hmm. when I was like 20, 21, 22. I started, I started isolating myself. I, mm -hmm. would, I would lock myself up in the room. And my parents never understood what was going on because I never told them mm -hmm. that I was depressed. So mm -hmm. I used to lock myself up in the room i do not want to talk to anyone i so yeah those are some of the of the things you'd notice weird changes of behavior mm -hmm. and most parents tend to to scold their children i didn't go through that my mm -hmm. parents are quite understanding mm -hmm. but the parents who would beat their children because bona squeezy umacha kufanya hivi bona hauko hivi i think we should be more interactive with our children mm -hmm. and know why they're having changes in behavior, why, they, why they're not acting mm -hmm. like they used to. Yeah. So, so just changes in behavior. Okay. Yeah. And so to an extent, you'll find that the people who are residing in the, in the urban centers, mm -hmm. you find that they are much aware of what yeah. comes with mental health. Mm -hmm. But those who are back in the village, yes. you find that mental health mostly is associated with witchcraft. Mm. When, mm -hmm. when, when, when you mention mental health, mm -hmm. and then when you mention mental health, mm -hmm. or rather when you mention depression or any, any facet of mental health, yeah. someone will say, I'm taking you to a psychologist, and then you say, psychologist, but I'm not mad. Yeah. Wazimu. <laughs> I'm not walking naked. Yes. So how are you taking this mm. to the grassroots yes. to make this poor mama understand what yes. depression is? So that's actually a very good question mm -hmm. because there's a lot of stigma around mental health. You tell someone you're going to see a therapist and they're mm. like, eh, we are me quite cheesy. We associate mental health with madness. Yes. And which is actually not true. Mm -hmm. So Mamba24 mm -hmm. is an app. We, I created this app alongside other group of people. Mm -hmm. So in this app, you it's a safe space where you can report these cases of of bullying, of gender-based violence, domestic violence. Mm -hmm. So how we're reaching out to the rural, rural areas, mm -hmm. we have, we're we planning to reach out to those Nyumbakumi initiatives mm -hmm. so that we can talk to the chairmen and get them to install these apps mm -hmm. in various villages, you know, mm -hmm. so that we can have at least one setting where people can go a safe place where we'll have one of our people, one of our therapists who are there. So this will be like a center 
where they can go and report whatever issue they're going through. And also we have phone numbers. Mm -hmm. There are phone numbers for our therapists, counselors, and lawyers. So these lines, we also have a toll-free line. Mm -hmm. So these numbers, we spread them to the to the rural areas mm -hmm. so that those who are not aware about how can I report what I'm going through, how can I report rape, how can I report bullying, they can get access to help mm -hmm. through our phone numbers and through the app that we have created. So if you'd like to reach out to this app, you just search for tufo.co.ke, tufo.co.ke. There's a pop-up that comes as soon as you log in the app. Mm -hmm. And once you take that pop-up, a therapist or whoever is behind the line will reach out to you and will match you with whatever service that you need. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So uh, I was reading your bio mm -hmm. and then in your bio you're yes. saying that you're helping to reduce stigmatization yes. on mental health. Mm -hmm. So my question is how are you going about it yes. it being that in our country yes. there is criminalization mm. of suicide yes. and suicide is one yeah. of uh, one of the things that come with mental health mm. and then you take like a scenario like happened some time back yeah. a young man wanted to jump from a very tall building and kill himself or rather mm. wanted to commit suicide yeah. and then when he jumped down he ended up in a police station, meaning whatever he wanted to do was criminal. Yes. So how are you trying to kill stigmatization yes. around mental health yeah. when it's criminalized in our own country? So I'm also facing stigma mm -hmm. because I've been to a couple of interviews sharing my story about mm -hmm. bullying and everything. And mm -hmm. by sharing the stories, the people who have told me, mm -hmm. stop embarrassing yourself. Mm -hmm. No one will hire you if you share such stories. Mm -hmm. It's in the past, forget about it. That's stigma. Mm -hmm. People don't want you to talk about your past before, because they feel like your past is gone and you should bury it under a shell. You shouldn't ashamed yourself. Mm -hmm. And that is, that is what makes people not speak up. Mm -hmm. So what we are doing, there's actually a bill, Senator Kasanga has a bill in the parliament, a mental health bill, where she is actually pushing for that, the arresting of people who are trying to commit suicide. She's trying to get that law mm -hmm. put aside. So yeah, there's that aspect of Senator Kasanga pushing it. Mm -hmm. But us as an app, mm -hmm. we, what we do is we, we, we have um, free online classes mm -hmm. where we offer classes to people on how to how to deal with stigma you know teaching people about mental health and depression the effects of stigma why we should stop it so that is the part we are playing as an app creating free education to people on stigma and why we should end it and why it's important to end it so yeah all right yeah. so you are a fashion enthusiast yes talk about it <laughs> so i am also a fashion writer mm -hmm. a blogger and a stylist um, I have a fashion brand. Mm -hmm. It's called JJ Fashion Parlor. Mm -hmm. So we, in this brand, there's, as I've said, there's, a, there's the styling aspect of it and there's the blogging aspect of it. So mm -hmm. in terms of blogging, I started writing fashion articles in, in 2014, 2015. Mm -hmm. Yeah, professionally. So I created a website and I started um, writing everything revolving around fashion, pop culture, you know, fashion news, mm -hmm. how to dress, what to style. And as I went, as I, as I grew as a fashion writer and blogger, mm -hmm. I got to work with people like Phil Batumkwiche, he's mm -hmm. a stylist in Kenya. Wow. I got to work with Africa Seri, Africa Seri Collections. Mm -hmm. And um, I think the most important one, the biggest one was Thick Leons from South Africa. Oh, wow. She's a plus size model. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I created um, an article about her brand mm -hmm. and she got to put it out and that was really amazing. So I started writing in 2016, 2015. Then now as I was writing, I got inspired to start styling people. Mm -hmm. So my friends would invite me for their bat birthday shoots. Mm -hmm. I would source outfits for them and style them. I also have um, a designer who makes clothes for various people. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if you're looking for that, you can also <laughs> hit me up, mm -hmm. yes. Okay, Yeah. so 
we are coming to the end of the show yes. but before that mm -hmm. uh, I want you to look in that camera mm -hmm. and then just encourage yes. a young boy a yeah. young girl who is going through depression yeah. and then at the end of it yes. tell them your social media handles so okay. they can find you so depression is nothing to be ashamed of whether you're going through domestic violence gender-based violence whether you you've been raped and you're suffering in silence speaking up actually helps i am a, a victim of the of severe depression i have been told to shut up a lot i've been told not to share my story but by talking about it i tend to heal and i'm a voice for so many out here so whatever you're going through i want you to know that there's hope for healing there is hope for healing. Please talk about it. Don't, don't focus on the stigma. Talk about it and reach out to us for help. Mamba24, 24.co.ke. We have amazing therapists. We have amazing lawyers that you can talk to. And if you'd like to reach out to us, you can check us out on Instagram at mamba24 underscore ke. My personal handle is jjpala underscore ke. And if you'd love to get my fashion blogs and um, articles and maybe some styling services, you can check us out as jjblogs underscore ke. Yeah, remember to speak up and don't let anyone put you down about whatever depressive moment you're going through. Wow. Yes. So wow, we celebrate you Thank here you. at Way254. Thank you. And keep doing what you're doing best. Thank you. So we've come to the end of the show. And just to remind you of our social media handles at Y254 in the morning, at Y254 channel, sorry, engage me at Faith Msoli. And to our parents out there, remember that children need your presence in their life and not just your presence. Sorry, children need your presence in their life and not just presence. I've been your host, Faith Msoli. Kayesu is up next with Galstock. Stay tuned. <laughs>